Okay, and this is what we're gonna talk about here. There are two types of load balancer. Load four, layer four load balancer, and we talked about layer four, where we only know the IP and the port. Okay, that's what you need to know. At layer four, these are the two pieces that you know. You don't know the data. You know there is a data. It's, it's a part of the data segment, but you can't dare and look at it because it doesn't make any sense to do that. Sometimes it is encrypted using TLS. Sometimes it is scrambled and turns compressed. So it doesn't really make any sense to look at the data through the TCP layer. Okay, so we don't do that at all. Okay, but essentially what you do is a layer 4 load balancer looks at the IP address and sometimes the port if you want to and makes a decision based on that. Okay, so let's make a request. Uh, let's say it's a very simple TCP request and it's coming from it goes to the port, uh, to it goes to this uh, load balancer, the reverse proxy. So there is one connection that has just established here. And what it does is okay, it says, okay, I am going to you, sir. Okay, this is coming from me. This is the IP address. And this is the data. And this load balancer looks at that thing only. Okay. And so, okay, you want to go to me. I know myself as a load, uh, layer 4 load balancer. So I'm going to look at that. What you really want to go is either this machine or this machine. Right. So what it does, it makes certain smart choices based on the algorithm that is defined on the load balancer uh, software there is round robin which means one by one it will just round robin through the request there is another algorithm called least connection there's other algorithm as well but essentially picks a server could be randomly it could be round robin and literally change the ip address underneath the target to that ip address and how it does that essentially using network address translation, okay? And this is very critical, guys. And what happens here is it keeps a table where, okay, I change the source from this, from me to 44333, okay? And that's what I did, and it keeps an entry. And we talked about network address translation. I'm gonna reference that video there, okay? You go look at it. Essentially, well, that's what it does. But here's the trick. This is one connection, guys. This is one TCP connection. As far as this guy concerned, nothing happened. Okay, it didn't know that it was forwarded to that, and that's why it's called reverse proxy because the client doesn't know which server it was connected to, right? Or the proxy, the the server doesn't know which client it is uh, coming from. Okay, so that's the difference between reverse proxy and proxy in a, in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, some people can disagree with that. We can talk about it because there are some proxies add headers that tells the server which client originated that request. But in a nutshell, at that level, at layer four, you don't know. Okay, layer server, yeah, might be. All right, so that's essentially what happens, right? Take the request, boo, da, goes to that thing, and that's it. Okay. It changed that request, all right? Also change, obviously, where it is coming from. It doesn't leave the 4111 to this because this guy doesn't know how to talk back to the client, okay? It knows to, how to talk back to the proxy because sometimes it's a different subnet, the whole thing, right? It could be a completely different zone, okay? So you need to really just give it yourself, okay? And layer four, pros and cons. What's good, what's not good about this, okay? So it looks at the IP, and that's it. It just changed the IP address. So it can look at what? It can look at latency, it checks if the server is up and down, and that's it, right? And it uh, looks like how how fast this server is responding and makes a decision based on that. So let's look at the pros here. The pros is it's simpler, right? Because it literally looks at the IP and the port, and it's right there. It doesn't need to look at the data. So it's a very simple load balancing. It's also efficient because we don't need to look at the data, so it's faster, right? Okay. This is debatable, okay, with current technology, but how fast compared to layer seven? But it is faster nonetheless, right? Especially it doesn't need to decrypt and all that stuff. It doesn't look at the data at all. So it looks at the IP and the port. And it is kind of I added that. I didn't see it anywhere, but I believe it is more secure. And the reason for my belief uh, that is this um, it's more secure is 
layer 7 and we're gonna come to that layer 7 layer 7 needs to look at the data so it actually if it's HTTPS it needs to decrypt it so it needs to have the certificate so if the load balancer got compromised right all the data uh, is, is essentially available for the hacker but if the load balancer the layer 4 layer balancer got compromised nobody can take a can gain anything out of it okay because it's still just packets that are encrypted would even the load balancer doesn't know what's in content of this data right so that's to me more balancer you can you more it's more secure you can disagree with that leave it in the comment i would love you uh, have to have a debate and talk about this because that's where we are we're a software engineer we discuss right okay we cannot just assume everything is just final right guys um uh, one TCP connection, we talked about that, and it's very critical to know that this is one TCP connection, right? And it's, it's like connecting to your router and eventually to Google.com, right? There is one TCP connection between you and Google, but, uh, but the router routes that TCP connection through multiple routers, but essentially there is one pipe not really pipe circuit if you will between the destination and the source right it doesn't the the, the load balancer doesn't terminate the tls it's okay no you connect to me sir you do not you do not see anyone else okay so we kind of for this is a one tcp connection and it's critical so that's kind of more efficient right so one tcp connection it's list management and it uses nat i don't know if this is a pros or cons but this kind of statefulness there, right? When you use that. Uh, cons, what's bad about this? There's no smart load balancing. So what does that mean? If you can't look at the data, you cannot make smart decisions based on the data. Like that means you cannot look at the cookies. That means you cannot change anything in the headers if you're using HTTP load balancers. You cannot, uh, you cannot modify, you cannot rewrite URLs, right? Like saying, okay, if you go to slash, uh, you, you, well, you know these affiliate links, like as oh, go hosannasa.com slash NordVPN, right? And, the, and if someone goes to that, rewrite the URL to go to some other URL. You cannot do this with, uh, with, with a layer four load balancer because you have no idea what the path is. The only thing you know is the IP. You cannot do anything else. Okay, so that's a kind of cons, and it's a big cons, right? It's a, it's not applicable for microservices. Microservices essentially, uh, when when you go to a specific load balancer, you the ingress protocol can use the content to forward to different services based on the path. Like if you go to like uh, Instagram, let's say let's assume Instagram uses microservices. I believe they do. But if you go to a REST endpoint called slash pictures, it will take you to a complete service that is dedicated for pictures and media and, 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 uh, and data and blob storage, right? So it goes to that. It knows how to cache. It knows a lot of things, right? Versus if you go to a, an endpoint slash comments, same load balancer, it takes you to a completely different service, completely different set of service. Another team is managing that service, right? So slash comments, for example, it's managing the comment. Could be a different database altogether. We talked about microservices, right? Another video, I'm gonna reference it here if you guys are interested. Uh, sticky per segment again this is something I added and this is very critical you don't really know need to know that but to me I had to think about it really hard about this that's what she said and uh, what happens is when you forward you make you make a TCP connection there is there is a maximum transmission unit that you can send like 1500 bytes right and uh, if you get request is, I don't know, a meg, then you need to break that into multiple TCP segments. So it's one packet, multiple segments. But guess what? This load balancer better forward all those segments to the same destination. You cannot s forward part of the packet to one server and another part of the segment, another server. That will be disaster, right? So... You might say, oh, the load balancer take care of this, so why are you adding this? I don't know. I just like to think about details. Uh, sometimes I might be wrong, but it has to be sticky. So sometimes the implementation of the load balancer has to be smart enough to all the segments that belong to a single packet ID, you forward to one server. 
I don't know why I added it to the to the cons section, but I just want to mention it. Okay, no caching because I cannot look at that data. I cannot cache it, sir. I cannot do anything, right? How how can I cache, right? Caching is essentially guys like if you make a request to Hussein Nasser slash index.html and another user and you made it for some reason your app made the request again. Uh, I already fetched that. I contacted the backend service. I am gonna cache it at the load balancer level. So, and and a lot of CDNs like Cloudflare does that all the time, right? Caching because they're using layer seven. They know what's the content of this. They can actually take that file, copy it somewhere, and look at the data. Hey, you were just requested that file because it's slash index.html, which is part of layer seven, right? You need to look at the content. Bye.